William's life has been a tapestry of experiences, with each thread shaping him into the man he is today. From struggles and triumphs to moments of deep reflection, he's forged a path that's uniquely his own. Yet his ways haven't always aligned with those around him, especially Charles, who finds many of William's behaviors difficult to accept. Charles, however, is caught in the grip of his own struggles, unable to intervene or influence William's choices due to his ongoing illness. Join us as we discuss why King Charles was left speechless after Prince William revealed a shocking decision. William's path to the throne. We cannot talk about William's shocking decision, which left King Charles speechless without starting from the very beginning. Prince William, born on the 21st of June, 1982 at St. Mary's Hospital in London, was destined to walk a unique path. He was the first child of Charles, now King Charles III, and the late Diana, Princess of Wales. As the first royal baby born to a prince and princess of Wales in over 75 years, his arrival marked a new chapter in the royal family. From a young age, it was clear that William's upbringing would differ significantly from his predecessors. His mother, Diana, was determined that her sons experience life beyond the royal bubble. Rather than being confined to palaces, William and his younger brother, Harry, were taken on outings to places like McDonald's, Disney World, and even to shelters for the homeless. Diana's intention was simple yet profound. To ensure her sons had a connection with ordinary life, despite their extraordinary circumstances. This unconventional approach gave William a sense of empathy and understanding that few future monarchs have had the chance to develop. Education played a pivotal role in shaping William's early years. Starting at Jane Minor's nursery and later attending the prestigious Ludgrove School, William balanced academics with sports, excelling in swimming, football, and even clay pigeon shooting. It was at Eton College, however, that William truly came into his own. While his father Charles and grandfather attended the remote Gordonstown in Scotland, William's time at Eton allowed him to develop a sense of independence close to home. There, he formed a bond with his grandmother, Queen Elizabeth II, visiting Windsor Castle for weekend teas and receiving early lessons in royal duties. Despite the royal privileges, William's teenage years were marked by tragedy. In 1997, his mother, Diana, died in a car accident in Paris when he was just 15. This loss was a turning point in William's life, and he admitted that he remained in a state of shock for many years. Walking behind Diana's coffin during the funeral procession was an emotional moment that symbolized the weight of his public role. He was supported by his father, grandfather, and his uncle, who understood the significance of his participation. In the years that followed, William balanced his royal responsibilities with a desire to carve his path. After graduating from Eton, he took a gap year, immersing himself in different experiences, from military training in Belize to community service projects in Chile. This time abroad shaped his worldview and kindled a deep interest in environmental conservation, especially in Africa, where he even taught himself Swahili. William's academic journey continued at the University of St. Andrews in Scotland, where he initially studied art history before switching to geography. His time at university was a rare period of relative normalcy, where he could mingle with fellow students without constant media scrutiny. It was also here that he met Catherine Middleton, who would later become his wife. They both graduated in 2005, with William earning an upper second class honors degree an accomplishment that further solidified his readiness for future responsibilities. Yet it wasn't just academics and travel that prepared William for the throne. He was determined to serve his country in a hands-on way, leading him to a military career. Training at the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst, William took on the role of Lieutenant Wales, following in his brother Harry's footsteps. His military experience spanned across the Royal Navy, the British Army, and the Royal Air Force. 
Although he couldn't serve on the front lines due to his royal status, he found a meaningful role in search and rescue operations as a helicopter pilot, saving lives and gaining a new appreciation for the everyday struggles of those he served. In 2015, William took up a civilian role as a pilot with the East Anglian Air Ambulance, a decision that left many, including his father, surprised. It was rare for a senior royal to work outside of royal duties, and William's choice reflected his desire to stay grounded and connected with real-world challenges. He donated his salary to charity and balanced the demands of his role with growing family responsibilities, eventually stepping back in 2017 to focus on his royal duties. Now, as the Prince of Wales, William continues to prepare for his future as king, but he does so on his terms. Many things happened during William's life that shaped him into a personality that may be completely different from any king or queen up to now. His experiences, joys, and even the events that made him angry have led to unique attitudes, ones that have often surprised even Charles and promise a fresh chapter for the British monarchy, the shadow of a royal affair. Now, you must be wondering what it was that shaped Prince William into the person he is today, by many accounts, tough-minded and determined. To understand him, you have to go back to a time when his family was in the throes of a very public and painful drama, the fallout of an affair that would change the course of British royal history. The affair between his father, Prince Charles, and Camilla Parker Bowles left a deep impact on a young William, shaping his views on loyalty, love, and trust. While today he puts on a public face, offering his blessing to Camilla's role in his father's life, the truth is far more complex. His resentment toward her has always lingered beneath the surface, and it would lead to some surprising decisions, but more on that later. Charles and Camilla's story began back in 1970, before Diana was even in the picture. They met at a polo match, introduced by a mutual friend. Camilla's easygoing nature and her relaxed attitude toward royal protocols drew Charles in, and the two quickly became close. But just as their relationship began, it faced obstacles. Charles joined the Royal Navy in 1971, leaving their budding romance behind. And perhaps more crucially, the royal family did not see Camilla as a suitable partner for the heir to the throne. By 1973, Camilla married Andrew Parker Bowles, seemingly moving on from her time with Charles, at least in public. But this wasn't the end of their connection. In the late 1970s, even though they were both married, Charles and Camilla rekindled their relationship, much to the quiet dismay of their spouses. Charles's marriage to Lady Diana Spencer in 1981 only made things more complicated. Diana, young and full of hope, became the new face of the royal family, while Camilla remained in the background. But their ties were never truly cut. Diana herself would later reveal with painful honesty that she always knew about the affair, famously saying, there were three of us in this marriage, so it was a bit crowded. For Prince William, witnessing his mother's anguish was difficult. He was just a child, but the emotional tension within the royal household left its mark on him. By the time Charles and Diana separated in 1992, the story had become a public scandal, and William, despite his youth, understood much more than most people realized. He saw how his mother struggled, how the media devoured every detail of her pain, and he knew Camilla's role in all of it. The affair between Charles and Camilla was the reality that fractured the family he had known. Fast forward to 1998, a year after Diana's tragic death, and Charles felt it was time to introduce William to Camilla. Their first meeting was strained, to put it mildly. William, still grieving and fiercely protective of his mother's memory, found it difficult to accept the woman who had caused so much distress. Camilla herself was reportedly nervous aware of the hurt that lingered between them. After their brief encounter, she was said to have needed a stiff gin and tonic to calm her nerves. 
and though William maintained a polite demeanor, it was clear that he wasn't ready to embrace her as a new part of the family. Over the years, the relationship between William and Camilla remained complex. Even as Charles and Camilla's relationship became more public, leading to their marriage in 2005, the dynamic between William and his new stepmother was far from smooth. The public statement that William and Harry released expressing their happiness for their father was just that, a public statement. In private, the feelings were far more conflicted. William was not one to forget the past, especially when it involved the pain his mother endured. Still, time and royal duty required William to maintain a facade of unity. By the early 2000s, he grew more accustomed to Camilla's presence, particularly as she became a more central figure in his father's life. It's often said that Kate Middleton played a role in smoothing over some of the tensions, treating Camilla with kindness and setting an example for William. Yet, even as he became more tolerant, the old wounds never fully healed. How King Charles's health revealed old tensions between William and Camilla. Although for several years it seemed as if there was harmony between William and Camilla, the recent revelation of King Charles's cancer diagnosis has brought new tension into their relationship. King Charles, now 75, received his cancer diagnosis during a routine treatment for benign prostate enlargement at a private London hospital earlier this year. Although the palace has kept the exact details of his condition private, they confirmed that the king has been undergoing a schedule of regular treatments since February. A palace statement clarified that he does not have prostate cancer, but beyond this they have remained tight-lipped, emphasizing that the royal family wishes for privacy during this time. This approach has left many questions unanswered, as the public speculates on the severity of his illness and the impact it might have on the future of the monarchy. The king's health has been a point of concern, especially as he continues to fulfill his royal duties despite his condition. After undergoing a corrective procedure for prostate enlargement earlier this year, he spent three nights in the hospital and then took some time for private recuperation. It was during this period that doctors identified a separate issue of concern leading to his cancer diagnosis. Yet even after the diagnosis, Charles has continued to keep a busy schedule, attending various engagements and maintaining his public appearances. But what does all of this have to do with Camilla and William and their relationship? While the diagnosis has brought forth new challenges, it has also exposed the differing ways in which Camilla and William view King Charles's responsibilities and well-being. At the heart of this tension lies a disagreement over how much the king should be pushing himself, especially when he is undergoing treatment. On one side, Camilla insists that the royal family should maintain a strong public front, while William believes that his father should prioritize his health above all else. Camilla has taken a firm stance, maintaining that Charles is doing well and can continue with his royal duties despite his illness. During a visit to the Dyson Cancer Center in Bath, she gave a brief update on Charles's condition, reassuring the public that he is doing very well. While this statement was likely intended to ease public concerns, it has not had the same effect within the royal household. William, who is deeply concerned for his father's well-being, saw Camilla's words as an attempt to downplay the seriousness of the situation, which he believes is putting unnecessary pressure on the ailing king. The current disagreement over his father's health has brought those old wounds to the surface, making it difficult for him to stay silent as he watches his father push through public engagements despite needing rest. Camilla, on the other hand, seems to believe that showing resilience is vital, especially during this uncertain period for the monarchy. As queen consort, she may feel a responsibility to maintain a sense of stability and strength, both for the public and within the royal family. Her approach to Charles's illness reflects a desire to protect the monarchy's image, keeping the focus on duty rather than vulnerability. 
Some speculate that she fears that admitting any frailty could undermine the king's authority, especially when his reign is still relatively new and public confidence remains in a delicate balance. However, William doesn't see it that way. To him, prioritizing Charles's health is the ultimate show of strength, and he believes that honesty with the public about the king's condition is more important than projecting an image of invincibility. Earlier this year, when King Charles decided to go public with his cancer diagnosis, William supported the move, seeing it as an act of leadership. Camilla, however, reportedly opposed the decision, fearing that the resulting media scrutiny would bring unnecessary stress to the family. While William respected his father's choice, he was frustrated by what he saw as Camilla's overly protective stance, a rift in the royal family. However, Camilla is not the only one who turned William into what he is today. The ongoing feud with his younger brother, Prince Harry, has left its mark, shaping William's more resolute and guarded nature. The tensions between William and Harry began in earnest around 2018, shortly after Harry's relationship with Meghan Markle became public. Harry accused William of not doing enough to welcome Meghan into the royal fold, which led to a heated disagreement between the brothers. For William, it wasn't just about Meghan. He was concerned about the pace of their relationship and what it might mean for Harry's future within the royal family. Harry, however, interpreted William's concerns as criticism and an attempt to undermine his happiness. What started as a difference of opinion quickly escalated into a deep-seated rift. William's frustrations grew even more intense after Harry and Meghan decided to step back from their roles as senior royals in 2020. The move blindsided William, who felt that Harry's abrupt departure was a betrayal, not just of their family, but of the responsibilities that come with being part of the royal institution. To William, who had always embraced his duty, Harry's decision seemed like an abandonment of everything they had been raised to uphold. The tension only deepened as Harry and Meghan settled in the United States, making a series of public statements that included accusations of racism and mistreatment by the royal family. These accusations struck William as unfair and disloyal, further entrenching the rift between the brothers. In William's eyes, Harry's actions publicly criticizing the family and airing grievances to the media were a direct attack on the royal institution and everything they had worked to maintain. William felt that Harry had chosen to distance himself from the family in favor of a life that put personal grievances and media attention above loyalty. For someone like William, who values tradition and duty, Harry's departure from royal life felt like a personal affront one that he could not easily forgive. Yet, while William has taken a hard line against Harry's choices, King Charles has adopted a more forgiving stance. Despite the hurt and upheaval caused by the public fallout, Charles has repeatedly reached out to Harry, even inviting him, Meghan, and their children to royal gatherings at Balmoral. For Charles, these gestures are an attempt to heal the family rift and maintain a connection with his younger son, who remains an important part of the family, regardless of the tensions. William sees this approach as too lenient, even naive. He believes that there should be consequences for Harry's actions, particularly the public criticism of the royal family. To him, Charles's desire to bring Harry back into the fold underestimates the damage that has been done to both the family's reputation and their internal relationships. This difference in perspective between father and son has only added to William's frustration. He feels that Charles, by extending an olive branch to Harry, is ignoring the lasting impact of Harry's words and actions on the monarchy's image. Prince William shakes. Things up. All this leads us to William's shocking decisions. The first of them was obviously a way to scare Camilla so he took a bold step that sent ripples through royal circles, removing Queen Camilla's sister, Annabel Elliot, from the payroll. 
After more than two decades of working closely with the British royal family, Annabelle's role as an interior designer for the Duchy of Cornwall estate has come to an end. The move highlights Prince William's determination to take matters into his own hands and shape the monarchy to his liking, a preview of how he might lead when he eventually becomes king. Annabel Elliot, 75, had enjoyed a steady income since being hired by Charles, now King Charles, back in 2005. Her work included everything from designing interiors for the duchy's properties to refurbishing royal residences and maintaining the prestigious estates. This partnership had been a comfortable arrangement for Annabel, who was not only working as a professional designer, but also benefiting from her family ties to Queen Camilla. However, when William inherited the title of Duke of Cornwall in 2022, he made a series of adjustments to the management of the estate, one of which included ending Annabel's services. The Prince of Wales, who now oversees the $1 billion duchy, decided to end the arrangement with his aunt by marriage, marking a new chapter in the estate's operations. According to sources, William's choice to dismiss Annabel was strictly a business decision, with no personal animosity toward her or her work. Still, it's hard to ignore the underlying message. William is ready to steer the monarchy in his direction. Some royal watchers have speculated that the move was partly driven by a desire to distance himself from Camilla's influence. On the one hand, it could be seen as a subtle way of exacting a bit of revenge showing that his priorities differ from those of his stepmother. On the other, it signals a more significant shift in how William plans to handle the royal estate and its affairs. This approach hints at the way he intends to lead the royal family when he eventually ascends the throne, modernizing operations and focusing on transparency and efficiency. During her time working with the royal family, Annabel had been handsomely compensated with earnings ranging between $25,000 and $100,005 annually for her design services. She also received additional reimbursements for purchasing furniture and decor for royal properties, at times amounting to over $100,000 a year. Despite this, the recently published Integrated Annual Report revealed that for the first time in nearly 20 years, Annabel did not receive any payments for the 2023 and 2024 financial years. Instead, the report emphasized that her past work was conducted on an arm's length basis, a formal nod to the business-like nature of the relationship. William's decision also stands in stark contrast to how his father, King Charles, managed similar matters. Charles had maintained a tradition of transparency for over three decades, revealing how much he paid in taxes on the duchy's income. In contrast, William, who took home a substantial $30 million from the estate last year, has opted to keep his tax details private, breaking with his father's approach. This choice, while legal, has raised eyebrows among those who see it as a departure from the precedent set by his father breaking royal tradition. However, the decision to fire Annabel was only the beginning for William. King Charles was left speechless after Prince William revealed his shocking decision to change a centuries-old tradition. With King Charles focused on his ongoing cancer treatment, William has started making bold moves in preparation for his future reign. Rumors suggest that the Prince of Wales is determined to reshape the monarchy, starting with a tradition that has been in place for over three centuries, the close ties between the British Crown and the Church of England. Prince William has reportedly been contemplating a major shift in the coronation ceremony, where the monarch typically takes a religious oath, pledging loyalty to the Protestant faith and the Church of England. This practice dates back to the Reformation in 1534 and has remained a cornerstone of the British monarchy since 1689. However, William is said to be exploring the possibility of removing these religious vows entirely from the ceremony. 
Insiders claim he is even considering disestablishing the Church of England's status as the state religion. I'm banning this no matter what, he allegedly declared in private conversations with King Charles. The news has sent shockwaves through royal circles and religious institutions alike. King Charles, who took his oath on the Bible during his coronation, promising to uphold Protestant values, is reportedly troubled by his son's plans. Charles, known for his deep appreciation of tradition, has always embraced his role as the head of the Church of England. Throughout his life, he has maintained a strong relationship with religious leaders, including Justin Welby, the Archbishop of Canterbury, who officiated his coronation and has been a steadfast advisor to the royal family. Camilla, the Queen Consort, is also believed to be uneasy about the proposed changes. Having stood by Charles during his coronation and other significant royal ceremonies, she has witnessed firsthand the deep, rooted connection between the monarchy and the Anglican Church. To her, these traditions are more than just rituals. They symbolize the enduring legacy of the British monarchy. Yet, as William's plans become more concrete, it seems that he is willing to redefine what the crown represents in the 21st century. The potential shift could have far-reaching implications for the Church of England and its millions of followers. If William were to proceed with this idea, it could mark the end of Christianity as the official religion of the British state, a change that would not only alter the nature of the monarchy, but also challenge centuries-old beliefs about the divine right of kings and queens. Justin Welby, as the spiritual leader of the Anglican Church, finds himself in a particularly delicate position. He has always worked closely with the royal family, ensuring that faith and tradition remain integral to royal ceremonies. William's decision could put Justin in a challenging spot, forcing him to navigate a new relationship between the church and the crown. While some see William's vision as a bold step towards modernizing the monarchy, others fear it may erode the essence of what has made the institution endure for centuries. What do you think of this strange move? Let us know in the comments and subscribe to our channel for more.